everybody, I'm Biebs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for being here with me. It is undeniable that Catherine, the Princess of Wales, has amazing hair. So many people are jealous of that woman's luscious locks, and there is good reason for it. But it's also true that despite the Meg's hairstyle annoying people with it being in her face or not necessarily styled in the way that's appropriate for a given event, Despite that, many people would love to have hair as thick and long as hers. So while Duchess hair is enviable, the real question is, is it all their own? Today I'm going to be answering some of your most asked questions, namely, do they use extensions and is the Meg wearing a wig? Let's start off with Catherine, the Princess of Wales. As a trained cosmetologist, I can say with almost 100% certainty that Catherine is not wearing extensions. Her hair is absolutely gorgeous, and she does a wonderful job of taking good care of it and of styling it. Her hairstyles are always appropriate for the occasion and complement her outfits well. She's rarely looking like she's being eaten by her hair, like she has too much of it or anything like that, and she also doesn't usually do really severe hairstyles that can just be a little bit harder to pull off or just less flattering overall on like anybody. For example, the center part and really tight slicked back hairstyle, it's just not the most pretty on most people, which means she's not influenced by trends to kind of guide her way. She stays away from all of that. She does a really great job of choosing her hairstyles, but it's clear that she has a very healthy head of hair. Her hair is beautiful, it's long, it's full, it's thick. It has high density to her hair, meaning she has a lot of hair strands on her head. Some people have lower density and they'll say, I have thin hair, but really what they're referring to is that they have less hair on their head than some other people, like it's more sparse than someone else. If your hair is thin, that means each individual strand is really rather thin, and that too can make your ponytails smaller and things of that nature. Catherine doesn't have super thin hair either, but neither does Meg. Meg seems to have average density to her hair and not particularly thick, but not particularly thin hair either. Her natural hair is curly, very curly, as we saw in pictures of her growing up. We're gonna get into what the Meg probably does to her hair in just a little bit. Oh, Catherine's hair seems super thick and full, bouncy and has body to it and it's great. She really doesn't show any signs of using extensions. Now something that I could see her using is pieces for hairstyles. If she's doing an updo where she's going to be wearing a hat, for example, sometimes you want that updo to be nice and full along the back of your head. You don't want it to be super tight and super small a lot of the time. Now, of course, sometimes you can go with a small bun, but a lot of times she does these really beautiful, intricate designs on her updos. So all across the back of her head, there's all these beautiful little buns and curls and folds and chignons going on in that intricate updo. And as you can see in these pictures, it takes a lot of hair to achieve that. So sometimes people will use hair pieces like ponytail pieces or things like that to clip in to balance out a hairstyle because the most important thing is that it's really secure. So a hairstylist will secure the hair in a good base, thinned and very, very secure, but they might notice that there's a little bit more volume on one side than the other and they'll use a little clip in to enhance the other side and balance it out. Those are just pieces added in for that individual hairstyle on just that day. And I don't count that as using extensions at all. That's really kind of something that's necessary on a case by case basis. Once you've gotten up to going and you can see, okay, I need a little bit more support here or a little bit more hair in this spot in order to make this hairstyle work really nicely. That's one thing that I could see her potentially using, but there's no way to tell for sure, of course, either way, but that's really, really common, like on wedding days or any Anything like that, any sort of special occasion, it's really common to do that. And obviously she has the resources to make sure that those pieces are matched perfectly to her hair, further making it difficult to tell whether or not that's something that she actually uses, but I could totally see that happening. She also does have the volume, the length, and the amount of hair to be able to pull off these updos and these hairstyles without needing the clip-ins or extra hair at all. It's just something that they might use some of the time. Let's pause for a brief moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Better Not Younger Hair Care. They sent me products from their Wake Up Call line, which is targeted for volume and adding like thickness and body to your hair. I tried 
get the shampoo and the conditioner, which were actually really nice. You guys, I was surprised by how much volume my hair actually did have. A shampoo, I only used one pump and it lathered up really nicely. And I tried two pumps of the conditioner and it was a really nice texture. They feel great and my hair felt really, really soft afterwards, but also had that volume. I'd let my hair air dry like I always do and just... I was impressed. It did have a lot of lift from the root. I also tried their high hold thickening hairspray today when I got ready and it does have good hold to it. Better Not Younger brand believes aging is a way of unlocking potential, a daily opportunity to look and feel better. It's the first brand designed specifically to address the signs of aging hair for women who believe beauty is not defined by age. Their clean and clinically developed formulas provide holistic solutions to thinning, lack of volume, dryness, frizz, and brassiness. I thought these products worked really well. So if you're somebody who feels like you've lost some density or some thickness to your hair, or if you're like me and you just like things that deliver good volume, then I recommend giving Wake Up Call a try. So give Better Not Younger and their Wake Up Call products a try today. Just click the link in the description box now. Some hair extensions are ones that you can just clip in and clip out, and they're called clip-in extensions. And you can do them and put them in and use them whenever you want. So this is one from Irresistible Me that they sent to me and it's actually a really high quality um, ponytail extension essentially. It has a clip-in spot right here that just goes into the top of like a ponytail and you tie it around and then you can style it and just make it look like you have a longer fuller ponytail. So this is the type of thing that's like a clip-in or something you might use for an updo like what we were just talking about. Obviously this doesn't match me. I will link this brand in the description box but if you guys buy something like this always go lighter than your hair color if you're not sure you'll have an exact match and then you can color it down using like a deposit hair color to match your hair color perfectly. Things like this are for just that day. You don't leave them in. Then there's tape in extensions which are applied with like a glue or a tape and then heat to bond it or sort of melt it onto your hair. Tape in or glued in extensions can be worn for several weeks at a time and then they need to be professionally removed as well. You can't just yank them out or anything like that. It can damage your hair. All extensions really besides those clip in ones worn on a temporary basis are damaging to your hair. These types of things put a lot more tension on the hair strands that they are attached to. And you have a much greater risk of breakage and just weakening those hair strands overall. From my point of view, it is clear that Catherine's hair is very, very healthy. And that is the real key that I have always believed in. If you want great hair, if you want really beautiful hair, you have to start with the health of your hair. Every single thing that we do to our hair damages it to some extent when it comes to styling, using any type of heat, tearing through our hair with a brush or comb not carefully enough, and of course coloring or straightening or perming our hair. All of those things are going to cause damage to our hair. It'll make it less shiny, more dull, more prone to breakage, harder to grow, all of those things. It'll look a lot more frizzy and lifeless and limp. When it comes to healthy hair, shine, bounce, and length are those signs that say somebody's hair is very healthy. When it's very shiny and beautiful, it's got bounce and movement to it, it's soft, it's silky, and it's long because you really can't get your hair to grow super duper long if it's not very healthy because it tends to break off really easily. So if you want hair that's going to look as beautiful as hers, then focus on the health of your hair. Your budget when it comes to like hair care products, the majority of it should be on high quality conditioning treatments, leave-in conditioners, a good quality conditioner in general, a nice shampoo that's going to be good enough of a cleanse for your scalp but gentle enough for the rest of your hair. Allocate more of your budget to those things than to styling. When it comes to your styling products, you'll benefit from better quality styling products, of course, things that are a little bit better for your hair, definitely. But without good conditioning, you're not going to help to re-strengthen your hair at any point. You can also opt for deposit hair color rather than permanent hair color. It is less damaging to the hair. You can also always go for like baby highlights rather than full blonde or lots and lots of highlights because bleach is going to be very damaging to your hair as well. So we see Catherine play with her hair color a little bit, but it's never anything too extreme. And part of that is because her hair color suits her so well. But when she gets highlights, they tend to be very small, which is called baby lights or baby highlights. So that's less damaging to your hair as well. Of course, styling, when it comes to styling, doing things that put less tension on your hair and are less heat styling, more gentle, is going to be the best approach. If you do those things, then over time your hair will be healthier and healthier and more and more like Kate's. You cannot style away 
damaged hair. You have to prioritize the health of the hair. Similar to skincare, I've always said this with skincare as well, or like makeup, you should allocate more of your budget to your moisturizers and to your actual skincare than you do to like your foundation and things like that. Now let's get to the Meg. Okay, big question here people keep asking, why is her scalp so much lighter than her face or the rest of her skin tone everywhere else? This is super common, you guys. I even have this happen. My scalp looks more like cool toned and paler than my face. This is very common, especially among people who have darker hair. So if you're brunette or darker and your natural hair coming out of your scalp, your roots are not super blonde and light and pale, then your scalp is typically going to be quite a bit lighter than the rest of your skin tone or it can look cooler in its tone. This is in part because your darker hair provides more shade, so to speak, for your scalp from the sun. So your scalp just doesn't get tanned or exposed to the sun. And this is why they say you should sunscreen your part. So no, nothing weird with that, nothing strange going on with that. That is completely normal and is particularly common the darker hair that you have. But on to the bigger question. Does she wear a wig? No, I do not think she wears a wig at all. When looking along the hairline, I see zero evidence of a wig at all, like literally none. Not that it would be problematic if she did. There's nothing wrong with using wigs or weaves or any sort of a hair piece. If it makes you feel more confident and that's what you prefer, then that's totally fine. Or if you, you know, need one for whatever reason, then that's totally fine. It's not problematic at all. And some hair types need certain treatments or, or styling things to make their hair more manageable or just based on preference. But with Megan, along these hairline areas, we would see some indication of a wig or a weave being used. For example, you can see here in comparison to some women who are wearing wigs or weaves, it's very, very clear when you look closely, at least to me, and yes, I do have a, to a degree, a trained eye, I guess, in this subject, but it's very, very obvious that, that she is not wearing a wig. This is a very natural and, and gradient introduction of her hair to her scalp. Along this area, along her temple area and things like that, where her scalp meets the rest of her face, you would see some indication of that, and we do not at all. We see a very, very natural progression into the thicker hairline area here. We also see maybe a tad bit of sign of recession of the hairline just a little bit that just is totally normal and happens over age and part of it is due to just the elasticity in the forehead reducing over over time you know into the 40s and beyond that elasticity of the forehead reduces and you know just kind of um, gravity and all of those things take effect and the hairline appears to recede, but it also does naturally recede to some degree in this age range. So we see some of those signs here and it's just not a wig or a weave at all. I've never seen her hair look like she has on a wig or weave at all. However, there is something else that I see many, many signs of and we're gonna get to that in just a second. Before we move on, I think everybody knows the difference between a wig and something else um, or extensions, but weave is where you put braids in, oftentimes like in a cornrow sort of pattern or it can be in a different pattern, and then you sew hair extensions into the braids. So then you have what looks to be a more natural flow of your hair, your hairline is not as disrupted as a wig, and it's more permanent, meaning that it lasts for several weeks. You use a needle and thread to sew the weave into the braid or the cornrows. Weave hair extensions are predominantly used for people with thicker hair because of the way that they are applied. Generally speaking, the weave application is a really long process that takes like several hours and the tight application, meaning the braids themselves are super duper tight, often puts strain on the scalp. It can feel really heavy and uncomfortable, which is also why it doesn't tend to work for thin or lighter hair. But this type of hair extension is really popular because it is the most permanent and seamless because the hair is literally sewn into your own hair and can't come off or fall off and you don't have glue and things like that, but it still can cause damage, particularly for if you have very thin hair, fine hair, if your hair is naturally lighter in color, then actually getting 
tight braids like these or weaves put in can actually cause more damage to your hair because it puts so much strain and tension not only on your scalp but along the braids where the weave is sewn in because the weave itself has weight to it as well and is pulling on and those threads they use to sew the weave in is pulling on your hair and putting tension on it. So what would be considered traditionally African-American hair or ethnic hair if your hair is curly, coily, or kinky. If you have those hair types, then a weave is something that can be very helpful. Some people need them in certain circumstances, and it can be a really nice solution for people who have that hair type because then they can have a more manageable hairstyle for a number of weeks. And since people with those hair types tend to have thicker hair strands, their hair is actually more protected in the braid and doesn't tend to show as much signs of damage from a weave. Not to say there's not gonna be any damage at all, but they typically don't experience damage and breakage to the extent that people with Caucasian hair. So for example, me or people who have blonde hair or lighter hair, straight hair, etc., try to do these braids and a weave, then you're gonna get a lot of breakage potentially. I mean, of course there's anomalies where you don't, but in general, you're gonna have a lot of breakage from it and it's really not a good solution. Your hair is not protected. But back to the Meg, what I do see with Megan's hair, it's not a weave, it's not a wig but I do see extension use. I believe she uses extensions really regularly, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's totally normal and very, very common. Now, extensions can also cause a lot of damage, as we talked about with, like, for example, the glue-in kinds, but there's also other types of extensions we'll talk about in a minute that can cause even more damage to your hair and breakage. I see some degree of damaged hair with Meghan's hair in general. Along the mid-lengths to ends of Meghan Markle's hair, it appears to be rather dry and show signs of damage to some degree. It's evident to me that she colors her hair, she's probably coloring away grays, which is totally normal and common and widely done, nothing wrong with that. But she also appears, my best educated guess, is that she appears to relax her hair. So it's essentially a perm, but not curly style. It's straightening. So when you professionally straighten or relax your hair, it's called chemical relaxing or chemical straightening of the hair. This process, you set the hair in the way that you want it to be whether that's curly or straight or even wavy. And then you use chemicals to cause a reaction that breaks the bonds of the hair and then they reform in the position that you have the hair set in. And during the time at which the bonds are reforming, you cannot mess with the hair. If you do, you will screw up the curl or the straightening effect and your hair will not be frozen in the shape that you want it to be when the bonds rebuild. In Megan's case, they are using chemicals to make her hair lay straight. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's totally fine if that's what she prefers and if she finds it to be more wearable or easier to maintain, like it takes less time to style her hair, then great, good for her. But it does cause damage. It's going to add to the degree of damage that your hair is experiencing. So if you are doing that and you're coloring your hair and you style your hair really regularly, then you've got this trifecta of damage and your hair will appear more porous and dry and stiff. Um, like just not soft and touchable. And that's what we see in some of these pictures with Meghan Markle's hair that it just definitely looks kind of damaged and dry. The benefits of having your hair chemically straightened or permed if you're wanting it to be more curly or wavy is that you can wash your hair all you want until your hair grows out to some degree, you're going to have a very low maintenance period of time with your hair. It's going to stay straight, in Megan's case, from that relaxer and you can just, you know, treat your hair like normal and it won't need straightening all of the time the way you would have to straighten your hair like with an iron every single time you washed your hair that would be so much work so it's very popular and and totally normal to do that if you really prefer to wear your hair straight but you do kind of when you do that you kind of decide like yeah i'm not doing curly hair anytime in the near future because once you do it you can't really get your curl back but back to extensions I think Meghan Markle uses extensions pretty regularly, especially when she's wearing her hair down. Because when you see her hair in a bun like this one, like the, you guys have said so many different things that this reminds you of, uh, but when she has it in these really tight ponytail buns or any sort of a bun, 
it's very, very small. So that indicates that her hair is not as long or as full as it is when she has these extensions in in these sorts of pictures. There's no way that you can have that much hair and get a bun that small unless you were using extensions when your hair looked super full and long. And we've also seen at times where she has her hair, you know, in this big, full, voluminous, lots and lots of hair, and then like literally the very next day, it's in a very, very small, tight bun or vice versa. Look at this lemon dress. Her hair is eating her alive. It's so much hair. It's way too much hair. It's crazy. And then here we have just teeny tiny buns. So I definitely think that she uses lots and lots of extensions sometimes to get that sort of mountains of hair type of look. That's, you. I mean, it's maybe a little bit outdated, but you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If you like a lot of hair and you really like to show your hair, then there's nothing wrong with using extensions some of the time but they do cause damage. So let's take a look at these different types of extensions here really quick. Fusion hair extensions are ones that are like bonded to the hair. It's fused to your natural hair using like glue, for example. Little individual chunks of hair extension is glued on to a little tiny piece of your natural hair. And these are done in, you know, lots of different little layers and areas. So it can be a lot more seamless than the big taped in extensions that kind of have like a big rectangle um, where the hair extension is applied, but it still is essentially gluing those hair pieces onto individual strands of hair. So at the site of the glue, you will often see a great deal of breakage and damage occur, especially if you forget you have these extensions in and go to brush your hair in those spots, then you can really tear out like tons of your hair. This is one of the most damaging types and I'm not sure that she uses this type because we see her frequently having lots and lots of hair and then not so much hair, which tells me that she's frequently getting extensions put in and then taken back out. So she might use something more like clip-ins or tape-ins, but she also might use microlink hair extensions. These are also known as microbeads. They are applied by attaching tiny wefts of hair into small sections of the natural hair with a small silicone lined bead. And then a special tool is used to secure the bead to the hair and it's tightened to hold it in place. So this does not use heat or glue, but if it's not installed really carefully, they can be very damaging. Like for example, if the bead is tightened too much, it'll cause pressure and pulling on the roots of the hair. And if it's not removed properly, hair can be pulled out. These are a lot more safe, so to speak, but they still cause some damage because if you imagine on a strand of hair, you have a literal bead squashed onto it with more hair, that spot is going to be getting friction and tension put on it from an outside source 24 hours a day until you take it out. So they do tend to cause a lot of damage at that site. If you're trying to grow your hair out, stay the heck away from weaves, braids, extensions of any kind, do not do it. If you need more hair for an event or for a day, go for a wig and leave your natural hair to just grow out and be really, really gentle with it. Don't even put it up in tight ponytails or tight hairstyles of any kind. Just be extra gentle and careful with your hair until it grows out more. If you're trying to grow out your hair or you've had a lot of damage and breakage in the past. I think that she probably has those beaded extensions in. Some people call them like ponytail extensions or things like that. Since they can be applied and removed a lot more quickly, they only take two to four hours to put in depending on how much you need. And they are a little bit less damaging, then I would see that being the option that she chooses. Which also explains why we rarely see her in a spur of the moment high ponytail. When you have extensions, they're usually put in, at least these types, along the nape of the hair, so the back of the head down low, or along the sides of the head up here. So you can't just go whipping your hair up into a ponytail when you have extensions like that in. You just can't. They will be visible, they'll have extra tension put on them, so you don't do that. But we do see Kate do that regularly. She'll just whip her hair into a ponytail for an athletic event, or if there's a lot of wind on the tarmac getting out of an airplane, she'll just pop her hair into a ponytail spur of the moment on a whim. She can do that. So although that adds length and volume to her hair, it's not necessarily the best option for the health of her hair, but again, that's totally fine if it's what you prefer. It does explain why we see such a discrepancy in the amount of hair and the, you know, volume of hair that she has from day to day or appearance to appearance, but it's definitely not a wig, it's definitely not a weave, and if it makes 
the person happy. I guess that's all that really matters. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to tell me in the comments if you enjoyed today's video and click the like button if you did. That helps me out so very much. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you and I hope you have a very happy day ahead. I'll see you next time. Bye!